in the last few days, a slew of banks and NBFCs came out with their numbers. Nitin Agarwal of Motila Oswal Financial Services joins us now uh, to talk about that and how he's seeing the entire sector. Nitin, I want to talk to you about Bajaj Finance. It was clearly the stock of the day yesterday in the NBFC space. Uh, but, uh, you know, after a good set of numbers. But the stock is still down about 15% in this calendar year. Uh, do you see the risk reward be favorable for long term investors now? So, uh, we are not uh, exactly like uh, it's not on the top of the ideas that we have in the NBFC space. And uh, though the performance continues to remain uh, pretty strong, and in terms of customer additions and growth, the company is delivering. But at the same time, the entire sector is going through a phase of de rating. And uh, which is which has affected the growth of most high valuation stocks in the sector. So therein we continue. Therefore, we continue to prefer uh, other ideas in the space, uh, wherein we like MMFS, Chola, Shiram, amongst the top ideas. This uh, changes in taxation within uh, which happened, uh, which uh, takes away uh, you know sort of debt mutual funds insurance as a source of funding. That uh, is that likely to have any impact, according to you, for the entire NBFC space, or not really? There uh, will likely be some increase in funding costs. That's uh, quite possible. And uh, because uh, with the incidence of tax now on the debt mutual funds, uh, the uh, investors may uh, demand slightly higher returns. And uh, to that extent, while banks will likely benefit at the margin, though the number is quite small to really move the needle for the banking deposits. But for NBFCs, wherein uh, mutual funds play a significant role in terms of their funding, uh, there could be some marginal uptake in funding costs. But I think the bigger driver will still be as to how they manage their own asset mix and yields, and that will move the margin a lot more than, than this alone. So by and large, isn't it better to stick with banks in an environment like this? Definitely. We continue to like banks, and uh, mm. wherein we think that the earnings momentum is going very strong. If you look at like 23, we are looking at a 46% sort of earnings, and incrementally, also, we expect the sector to deliver 20% earning growth over FY24 and 25. Okay. There could be year-to-year -year variations because of the margins and, and the credit cost normalization. But I think the sector is still well placed to deliver amongst the best of the earnings in the entire markets. All right. Hi, Nitin. Uh, good morning. Thanks so much for joining in. Uh, Nitin, uh, since you like banks, what's the toss-up between HDFC Bank and ICICI Bank? Over the last five years, the big re-rating took place in ICICI Bank. But in the last six months, it seems HDFC Bank is pulling back quite a bit and it's outperformed ICIC Bank. Uh, how do you view these two? So actually, we like both these stocks. While ICIC Bank from the lows uh, has re-rated consistently, especially after the management change. And we still see it delivering very steady earnings over the coming years. It's like becoming more of like coming on an autopilot mode, wherein things across multiple fronts, be it assets, liabilities, asset quality, margins, is now uh, like reaching the industry best levels. But HDFC Bank, uh, after announcing the merger, there was some sort of an overhang as to how the growth can pan out. But I think the recent uh, quarter performance, especially on the deposit front, uh, cautious all the concerns that have been there on the uh, around as to how the enti merged entity can generate enough liabilities to fund the growth. And uh, we believe that the uh, entity is well poised to deliver 17-18% growth on a merged basis and uh, which therefore leaves a good scope for re-rating in the stock. Uh, re-rating of HDFC Bank, you said? Yes. Okay, got that. The other stock which has delivered a very good set of numbers this time is Indusind Bank. Uh, you know, there's been what, a loan growth of, uh, it's been the best in 15, 16 quarters. Deposit growth is almost about 15% this time around. Is that a stock you like as well? And do you see a re-rating there? Uh, yes. Uh, so, Indusind Bank has been delivering a pretty uh, healthy performance. If you look at over the last uh, more than two years, every quarter there is an uptick in the reported earnings. And now the loan growth is also gaining momentum. And uh, incrementally, we expect the stock to deliver 20% plus loan growth over FI24 and 25 because some of the key segments like MFI, CV are going pretty strong and it will be well supported by the growth in the other verticals like SME and uh, affordable housing with corporates. And uh, therefore, ROA overall, uh, which is right now clocking around 1.8 to 1.9, it has a good scope to expand above 2 over the coming years. And that should drive re rating the stock in our view. Do you track any of the housing finance companies, Nitin? Yeah, so we uh, look at the affordable housing companies. Of course, we track HDFC, Canfin, PNB, and mm. many other affordable housing names. Mm. Mm. And uh, there, what is uh, what is your top idea? Any, anything you like? 
uh, given where prices are? So there uh, has been some, uh, like, I think it need to be looked at still on a case-to-case -case basis because in some places the managements have changed, in some places there have been concerns on margins. So we, we like uh, relatively uh, home first with our affordable housing names and uh, PNB housing. All right, uh, we leave it at that. Thanks a lot for joining in and uh, speaking to CNBC TV 18. So that's on the uh, you know the updates, business updates that came in from the banking and financial.